AI in Action is brought to you by Aulus International, covering your business's staffing, consulting, and networking needs. Our host brings you the leading minds in AI, sharing their story, their success, and their advice. Focusing on fast-tracking you to the top, AI in Action cuts through the hype to help you kickstart your data science career. To listen to the latest AI in Action podcast, head over to www.aldus.com forward slash podcast, or subscribe via iTunes, Stitcher, or Google Podcasts. You're listening to AI in Action. I'm your host, JP Valentine. Our guest today is Gaurav Chakravarti. Gaurav is the founding member of a stealth startup called DevRev. Gaurav, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's our pleasure. So Gaurav, like we do every interview, let's start with your background, from your journey, from where you got started in technology, some of the roles you've held along the way, taking us up to your, your current venture with DevRev. So yeah, I was um, in a PhD at UPenn, sort of working on best expert learning, algorithmic machine learning. I didn't make the connection, but one of my mentors, uh, Professor at Wharton, Dr. Michael Steele, he had this course, Financial Applications of Machine Learning. So it's a very, very applicable name uh, to what I was trying to do. And he made the connection of, hey, the this, this stuff you're working on could really work in finance, could make a lot of money. And then in further courses I took with him, yeah, he influenced me. I dropped out of PhD to join uh, Tower Research Capital. This was in 2005. Um, and then that, I, I was an early pioneer in what is now called high-frequency trading. And, and then the industry sort of changed to more infrastructure, low latency, scale. And we were at some point the second biggest trading group in the world. Um, and then I started my own companies and so forth. A couple of years ago, I um, joined Google where I led personalized recommendations on Google Assistant. I was also the overall tech lead for a new project, podcast recommendations. More recently, I, yeah, like you mentioned, I've uh, started at a company, DevRev. We are trying to, we're a young startup, but we are trying to sort of build a better experience for developers. Gaurav, so thank you for the background and I appreciate you giving the overview of your journey from uh, startups to hedge fund trading to Google and now uh, again venturing into another startup with DevRev. Uh, conscious of the fact that, that you're, you're still actively in stealth mode so you can't give away too much, but what can you tell us about your, your next project that you're working on? So we're very, very excited about this. It's, uh, we started yeah, DevRev trying to connect developers with the revenue we started this year, we have about 30 people now. DevRev's goal is to empower developers to come closer to their end users, the customers. Broadly, we, by using design, data engineering, and machine intelligence, to be a little more concrete, we are trying to build a system record and a system of intelligence that complements each other and gives developers a unified view of the events that they are, that are receiving them. Staying on the point of, of being in stealth mode and, and being able to successfully hire up to 30 people before you have a public launch, I, I think that's an area that often people wonder how you're able to accomplish that. So could you give us some insight into what it's been like speaking to a, a community of data scientists, machine learning engineers, and talking to them about a project while not being able to, to announce publicly? Because in this space, there's there's so many startups popping up and, and a big allure is the overall mission. How have you been able to navigate that, 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 that getting the balance of attracting top talent while, while not publicly uh, announcing everything that you're doing? Yeah, no, it is very challenging. I think um, it would be, it's sort of like playing with your hands tied behind your back. But what is concrete that we can share with um, prospective candidates is the culture of humility. And it sort of comes out as they talk to us. We know we have an uphill battle and, and we are upfront about it. Joining a startup is about believing yourself. And uh, we try to assess that in the candidate more than anything else. About uh, specifically ourselves, you know, we, we try to communicate our expertise through things we have done and uh, the plans we have the, um, and, and the sort of material that you can find independently about us in terms of research papers, things like that. Yeah, I, I think you've given some indications there that 
often people will look at who's at the leadership level and, and that can can speak to prestige and, and the, the type of work that's going to be done. So I think, you know, your your background yourself is is one that would, would get people interested in what you're going to do next. I want to now look at areas of interest to you because I know you and I spoke previously about, you know, what you still get excited about in this space, given you've done so much already from Google to Waymo and so on. When you look at what's next and the evolution of this technology, particularly all the new advancements within AI, what are you most excited about? Something that I'm very passionate about and I and I feel will be transformative to a number of industries. It's already being used, but it uh, will grow a lot, is graph neural networks. It's an approach that sort of marries knowledge graphs and recommender systems. It's used in sort of a, a lot of industry, including autonomous driving. If you if you look at more recent papers of how to do prediction you know, of where the agents will be in future, that also looks at agents as nodes in a graph and the models that interactions, uh, you know, through neural networks. And of course, there's uh, application in uh, drug discovery, etc. But more specifically to the uh, to my area of expertise, something I'm very passionate about is recommender systems. I'll give you an example. Traditionally, we think of recommender systems as their users and items, and using collaborative filtering or matrix factorization, we will try to find an embedding of users and items. This bipartite view of the world is kind of made up because in the real world, let's take users and items, let's say items are videos, you're trying to recommend videos. You have a lot more. You have the video, you have the publisher, you have items in the video, you have comments, you have search terms people use to get to the video. Each of these are entities in your graph and you want to model them and their interactions through a sort of a graph neural network. So Gaurav, you touched on it earlier on, that, um, although in stealth mode, you've already hired over 30 people in the last um, year, which is very impressive. Can you give us some insight into what the growth plans are for the rest of the year? And more specifically, what types of people are you trying to hire for? You know, what positions, what skill sets do you need to bring in? Uh, speaking to an audience of, of data professionals, what can you tell them that would get them interested enough to, to join DevRev without knowing the full full scope of what you guys are going to be doing? We, like you mentioned, we are about 30 people. We expect to be, uh, let's say, around 100 at the year end, and uh, 80 plus of them will be developers. The roles we are looking to hire in um, are sort of the entire life cycle of machine learning based uh, experience development. So for instance, machine learning systems, infrastructure, the, the the data management, machine learning inference, model validation, all of that. In terms of applications, we are looking for, uh, looking to build, and hence we are looking for people with experience in recommender systems, entity extraction, knowledge graphs, Bayesian inference, and graph neural networks. If you're interested in any of these topics, or if you're interested in trying to see, uh, do applied work that is sort of unprecedented in any of these topics, uh, please reach out to us. When you look at the skill sets and, and technologies required to run projects and, and build groups that you've done, what do you look for when you're interviewing candidates? What are the, the, the main things that you would focus on? And, and you know, flipping that, if you were to offer advice for some candidates when looking to make a move, what advice could you offer them that would help them improve their application process? For applicants who are interested in, in, um, in a startup role, they what we what we look for is their ability to to learn, and ability to go beyond their comfort zone, to to sort of take something, build an end to end solution. The space of learning is a little different because this is a little this is broad. You're learning about a number of topics, whereas on the uh, other hand, if I were in working on recommender systems at uh, at YouTube or some other large uh, company, then I would be more uh, interested in depth of learning. Can I go deeper into the same subject? So this is sort of the contrast and the, and the applicant should understand which what appeals to them more. As far as advice, there's one thing I want to give con- concrete advice to, and, and the target segment are people who have sort of been out of college for and in and, and the workforce for, let's say, eight to 10 years. I think the world is moving very fast and 
technologies that we used a few years ago are not very current. I think we need to sort of acknowledge that and we need to plan our careers around gradually upskilling ourselves, exposing ourselves to new technologies and have the humility to know that our career paths will not always be a straight line up. We need to take detours so that we can do better things in future. That's very helpful. I appreciate you sharing that. Um, when you look back at the, the various positions that you've held over the last 10 years or so and, and leading to going out on your own with your own company, what would you say are the, are the main learns that you had from previous startup to working with Google to high frequency trading that you've taken and, and, and you will yeah. use in, in, the, in the launching of your next business? One of the biggest things that I've learned and I seen successful in high frequency trading is you is to start directly with the objective and then uh, build a system around it for example uh, when i came in in 2005 the approach was very much around using sort of stochastic calculus and mathematical modeling techniques primarily because it was a low data problem but we were not trying to validate the models that much from data we're trying to make models that work in general and theor- theoretically sound. The approach to machine learning is that we took was start with the data and, and then orient everything around it. And that allowed us to move through the financial crisis and thrive and then uh, beyond. Uh, every year is better than the year before almost. Um, the same applies to recommendation systems. The same applies to autonomous driving, uh, Waymo, where I spent some time. And we are trying to you know, do that now in B2B space at DevRev. So if you can think of your business objective in terms of you know, if a set of clearly defined metrics and then build a system around that, um, you know, it is usually more efficient. Grab final question for me then. When you look at all the disruptions that have happened during the last year with the pandemic and the the change in the business landscape. What have you noticed when speaking to your colleagues and engineers as you're going through stealth mode while building up a business that has shifted in terms of people's opinions on future opportunities, uh, future companies that they may consider working for? A lot has changed last year and uh, certainly working from home has kind of hurt the camaraderie or the just a social element that you have at work. I'm hoping that the, you know we'll soon um, get to some level of physical uh, working together as well. On the other hand, people also have become more uh, accepting of the global nature of the wor- of work. I think we should try to find opportunities in this, and we should try to uh, orient our um, our future plans of building com- companies, building startups around this. For instance. Our global headquarters are in uh, the Bay Area, Palo Alto, but we have offices in in Austin, in in Europe, two offices in Europe, and uh, one in India. And we're doing that from the start. Uh, Gaurav, thank you so much for coming on and speaking to us today. I appreciate it. It was a somewhat of a challenging interview because we we can't really give give our audience the full scope of of what you're going to be doing at DevRev. But I think... the indications are clear that you're already doing something very special given that you've added 30 people in in the last year with another 80 to 100 more to go and and we're super excited once we can learn truly what you're doing at DevRev. Thank you again for coming on today. Um, AI in Action is brought to you by Aldus International, covering your business's staffing, consulting and networking needs. Aldus offer an exec search program. Aldus can help you discover how data science and AI can transform your company. With our unrivaled network of C-suite executives and senior AI professionals, we offer retained search services across the US and Europe. Get the Aldus advantage. Become a member of the Aldus community and enjoy some of the following. AI meetups. Once a month, our community gathers to listen to some of the leading experts in the world of data science and AI. Our speakers come from all over the world, including Dublin, Boston and Frankfurt. We also have our AI mentors. Our experts will provide mentoring to all its members. And don't forget our AI in Action podcast. Each week, we have guests from all over the world talking us through their education, career and more. Become an Aldus member and get the Aldus advantage. For more information and to sign up for our newsletter, log on to www.aldus.com.
That's www.aldus.com. Aldus International, empowering through AI.